Welcome to the Five Rivers Podcast. For more information, head to fiveriverschurch.com. We now join our services already in progress. Good morning, Five Rivers. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Why don't we stand up and slap our neighbor high five and greet them? Let's give them a high five. Onliners, if you don't have a neighbor, give your dog a high paw. our praise, you bring revival. We lift our hands, you lift our eyes up. Where your love is found, there will be no fear, no fear. God, your kingdom come, your will be done here. On earth as in heaven, Spirit of God, pour out, our hearts are wide open, Jesus we need you now, come have your way in this place, break our walls down, Spirit of God, pour out, on earth as in heaven, Jesus we need you now, we bring our shame, you bring redemption you turn our chains into our freedom our free. where your love is found there will be no fear. no fear god your kingdom come your will be done here on earth as in heaven Spirit of God, pour out, our hearts are wide open, Jesus we need you now, come have your way in this place, break our walls down, Spirit of God, pour out, on earth as in heaven, Jesus we need you your presence we are free there's no better place to be there's no better place to be in your presence there is truth in your presence mountains move we forever run to you we forever run to you in your presence there is peace in your presence we are free there's no better place to be there's no better place to be in your presence there is truth in your presence mountains move we forever run to you we forever run Spirit of God, pour out, our hearts are wide open, 
Jesus we need you now on earth as in heaven Spirit of God pour out our hearts are wide open Jesus we need you now come have your way in this place break our walls down Spirit of God pour out on earth as in heaven we need you now. When dark tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know oh, I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love shame no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to the lies. Oh, I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. No, I won't be shaken. Oh, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love all this power there's power that can break off every chain there's power that can empty out a grave there's resurrection power that can save There's power in your name Power in your name There's power that can break off every chain There's power that can empty out a grave Oh yes, there's resurrection power that can save your name power in your name oh i am standing on the rock yes i am standing in your love oh i am standing on the rock my firm foundation
I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head down. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life, all my life been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, your goodness is running after, it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me my life laid down, I'm surrendered now, I give you everything, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will say of the goodness of God Your goodness, your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after it's running after me With my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me One more time Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me down, I'm surrendered now, I give you everything, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, hallelujah, and all my life 
you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God who oh, I will sing of the goodness of God yes I will sing of the goodness of God hallelujah thank you Lord
welcomed by a melody an anthem I have always known a song that's always been in me all glory and honor dominion and power to you a million angels fall face down on the floor all to echo holy is the lord my heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar forever echo holy is the lord and memorized by every heart written in eternity oh every lifted voice apart joining in the symphony Face down on the floor, all to echo holy is the Lord. My heart can't help but sing with all of heaven roar. Forever echo holy is the Lord. before the throne of grace majesty before my eyes i'll let it take my breath away lift your voices a million angels a million angels fall face down on the
you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are holy. You are worthy, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so great to see everybody this morning. Thank you for coming out this morning to Five Rivers. It's great to see you. Hey, let's keep it rolling this morning. Let's keep this atmosphere going. We have a lot planned for this morning. We know that you're looking forward to all of it. So let's go ahead and greet each other this morning as we move to our morning announcements. Good morning, Five Rivers family. Along with the God Loves You Tour, the National Day of Prayer is also rapidly approaching that same week, Thursday, May 4th. There will be a gathering at Elkton Presbyterian Church that day from noon to 1 p.m. We have a few of these cards at the hospitality desk that have that information and some prayer points on it if you would like to pick one up. There will also be a youth rally for prayer and worship here at Five Rivers that same day from 6.30 to 8 in the evening. Five Rivers has an adopt a highway area along Route 213 near the church. Marshall Funk is heading up this effort and we need to put together a crew list. If you would like to volunteer for this cleanup effort, which is normally twice a year for a few hours one afternoon, please sign up at the hospitality desk in the next week or two. Once we have a list, there is a participant agreement form to fill out and then a date for the first cleanup will be set. Ladies, there are only three weeks left in our Abide Bible Study, which has been taking us through 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Let's make an effort to finish strong and get as much as we can out of this study. Even if you've missed a few weeks like me, we hope you can make it to the next three Mondays at 630. That's all I have for you right now, family. Have a blessed week and remember that God has good plans for you. people I am I have the mic guess what I'm not looking for volunteers like the first time ever I'm up and I'm just here to say ladies let's have lunch together <laughs> Sunday May 7th we are inviting all ladies mothers daughters grandmas um, single if you were born a lady we want you to come <laughs> Sunday, May 7th, we're going to have our luncheon following the service. Uh, so right after the service, we're going to go over to the gym site uh, and uh, fellowship together. We have a dynamic speaker I'm excited about. I won't drop the name. <laughs> um, but there is a sign-up sheet in the lobby so we know how many are coming. And also uh, so you can sign up to bring a dish to share and host a table. So after service, um, some of the, uh, myself, um, Amy, Beth, some of the ladies will be out in the lobby answering any questions, but sign up, sign up for your neighbors, sign up for your, your friends. Let's, let's fill the gym with ladies. Amen. Not unless they want to serve. We will gladly take men's servers. How you doing? Doing good? Well, I survived another year at Fine Arts. <laughs> All right. Hey, our kids did great this year. Tremendous, as always. Uh, I know the Mixon family at least is away, so 
and uh, Bella, at least in one category, advanced. But all of our fine arts from crew youth that participated this year, come on, stand up. Yeah. All right, over here. All right, are we missing anyone? Oh, Chase is in children's church. Hey, give them another round of applause. They did great this year, that's for sure. I'm going to ask Bill Stevenson to come right, meet me right here, please. All right. Bill turns 80 tomorrow. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. You've had your voices warmed up from worship. Come on, let's sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bill. Happy birthday to you. Now, for those of you that have been here for a while, you know that the place was built around <laughs> Bill Stevenson and even first assembly at the previous location. And, and we'll, we'll just stop right there, right? Right there. So in Scripture, when you, um, when you look in the New Testament and you come across the word pastor or you come across the word elder, uh, those, those can be interchangeable terms. You know that? And um, our governance structure here doesn't have that official name included. We have now a, a board of directors or more traditionally... Uh, deacon boards, deacons. So over the years, and most Assemblies of God churches don't have an elder role uh, for whatever reason. Some, some traditions may incorporate that into their church leadership structure. However, uh, just, just over our time here, I remember two and a half years ago in, in the middle of a message I, I just ask everyone to stand that's had their life impacted in a good way by Bill Stevenson in some way. You know, let's just do that again. I was, I was floored. If your life has been impacted by this man Amen. in some positive way. Yeah, look at this. I wish those of you wish, looking for, or watching from home or wherever could see how many people are standing, once again, at least half, if, if not more. Now, Bill, you have served in leadership with me for four and a half years now, and you're often here. And I'll just say this about elder uh, and, and interchangeable with pastor. Uh, there's been a number of times, not only you know, in the boardroom, but after a Sunday service, uh, either that day or the next day or sometime that week, you know, I'll, I'll have a stirring in my spirit or whatever or feel a certain way, and you will say, hey, pastor, what about, what do you think about this? And you could, that, that kindred spirit there, right? And just let you know this is a man of prayer that is, that is tuned in and uh, loves you and cares about you. Now, what I started... That's to, true. God loves me. Yeah, That's amen. That's important. <laughs> You have served with me in leadership in, in our whole time here, four and a half years. So sure. you know something that I don't know if I've ever done, and it's something I rarely, rarely, rarely ever do, and that's, that's exercise executive privilege, <laughs> right? All right. Is that true? That's true. Yeah, so uh, we want everyone to be able to serve well in, in their, their capacity. But I'm, I'm going to pull executive privilege today. How's that? I'm going to deputize you as honorary elder of Five Rivers Church, right? I'm old enough. He's old enough, he said. <laughs> and Melissa and I love you, appreciate you, as does this group. And we have something that we uh, prepared for you. This is a plaque. Uh, we, w I was thinking about this for... Uh, yeah, there you go. Zoom that out a little bit. I <laughs> uh, was thinking about these thoughts on, at our annual business meeting, uh, but you weren't with us that day, so I think it works out better today anyhow. 
This just says Five Rivers and Assemblies of God Church, our logo, Bill Stevenson, in recognition of 50 plus years of faithful service at First Assembly slash, need to zoom that camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I see what you're doing now. Um, for those at home, zoom that in there. Yes. Maybe we should have pulled it out. Got to. In recognition of 50 plus years at First Assembly slash Five Rivers Church, Matthew 25, 23, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Bill, we're honored to even know you. We want to present this to you. Can we stand and just express appreciation to many, many years? Of faithful God. service. God loves me and he loves you. Amen. <laughs> and to top it off, yeah, Melissa you. and I want to say thanks. And to top it off, we're going to try to get to five guys for lunch tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> All right. Our favorite place. Our favorite place. <laughs> Honor to serve with you. You know what? I'm just going to come right back down here. Can, turn those lights back on. Oh, I'm throwing the tech team a curveball today. We'll just, we'll just stay right down here. Sam and Sarah Skibo, come up here and join me, right? So Sam and Sarah have been in town with us since this past Tuesday, and they were even at Fine Arts with us over the last couple of days, and they are here candidating uh, potentially to be our next youth pastors at Five Rivers Church. So I want to give you permission to gang tackle them after the service. All right. In fact, who just wants to gang tackle right now? All right. Hey, if you'd like to, just after the service at some point, if you want to come up and greet them and say hi and uh, share some conversation with them, uh, I want to invite you to do that. I know they're very personable and would love to have an opportunity to meet you. So thanks for being here with us. It's been a good, good week with them. And uh, hang out with some folks afterwards. How's that sound? All right, let's say thanks again for being here this week. I forgot to grab a bottle of water. Any, any, any helpers in the house? Is there any, like, right around? Okay. There you go. I was going to let you throw it. There you go. All right. <clears throat> With the exception of having guest speakers here and special services over ho like holidays, Easter, Christmas, those kind of things. As you know, if you've been here for a while or watching online, we've been in this series uh, called Church and Culture, where we are using the writings of the Apostle Paul, who lived in a day much like our day in our culture today. So the relevance is just off the charts for uh, where we are and a lot of the things that we're facing. And I haven't done this in a while, so I'm going to remind us today of the purpose of uh, the twofold purpose of doing this series. We know today our culture we, is, is a godless, sex-crazed, and perverted culture that we're living in. Once again, much like the day uh, the Apostle Paul lived and ministered and wrote Scripture and wrote uh, his portion or the portion of God's Word that Paul was used to write. And we are highlighting that we have everything we need to live righteous or live in righteousness, live righteous and in the power of the Holy Spirit in real time. All right? So not just what they had back then, but in our day, in real time today. And the second reason we're doing this series is because Jesus is returning. He said he would and he will. And we have everything that we need to be ready when he does. I want to be ready. I want you to be ready. We are in a day of, of Vast falling away, which, by the way, is another mark of the end times that the Scripture says is going to happen. We're in a day of falling away, and I don't want that to be any of us. I want to show you a video clip from a church leadership conference that took place just a 
couple of months ago at the end of February, actually going into the first of March, it was a leadership conference, but the principle here uh, applies to anyone who is a follower of Jesus Christ. Watch this with me. On this rock. Now, this is just since the pandemic, right? So, research people like Barna, Tom Rayner, and other research groups had already been reporting of this, this hemorrhaging of ministers and Christians and churches closing down at an alarming rate, and that was before the pandemic. Honestly, you read through these numbers, you hear these reports, you, you shake your head, you have to look again and, and have to do a double take. It is. It is. It is quite alarming. The numbers are hard to believe, but this does not have to be the case. It does not have to be the, ca be the case. So let's continue in our stand against the devil with the armor of God, uh, part of our series. Amen. So let's get right back to it. We, we started this little mini segment called Suited and Standing uh, last week. So I, I'm going to do something that I don't even know if I've ever done this here. I'm going to ask you if you're able to stand again. We're going to read through a lot of the passages so far that we've covered in this part of the series, starting with verses 10 and 11 of Ephesians 6. So if you're able, let's stand. Let's read these together. Here we go. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the evil day comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Now we pick up on verses 15 and 16. And with your feet, feet with, fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So we'll do a mainline tradition saying here, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. So last week, what did we talk about? The belt of truth, shield, or the um, breastplate of righteousness, right? So now we see here, once the, the breastplate of righteousness has been fitted into position, what's the soldier put on next? His strong army boots, right? Josephus, who was an early church historian from many, many years ago, described what Paul says here, but from the Romans' uh, uh, soldier shoes, he described them as shoes that were thickly studded with sharp nails as to ensure a good grip. The military, if you read history, the military success of both Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar was due in large part to their armies being well shod or fitted, and thus they were able to undertake long marches at incredible speeds over rough terrain. We can understand this concept today. Imagine in more recent times, um, our American troops in the jungles of Vietnam or the sands of Iraq or the mountains of, of, of Afghanistan trying to go to battle uh, during wartime in either flip-flops or hey dudes. All right? Anybody here wearing hey dudes today? All right? One. I see one back there. Two. Anyone else? Three. Four. 
So for those of you that don't know what hey dudes are, just raise your hands again. Just find someone with their hand raised after the service, they'll show you. All right? You're going to find out they're not exactly suited or suitable to go to war with. This verse literally reads, though, having shod or fitted yourselves as to the feet in the readiness of the gospel of peace. But what is this readiness or preparation? We know that a part of a Christian soldier's equipment is his or her readiness to go out at any moment, to go out at any moment and announce or share the, the good news to somebody else. The apostle here in his writing in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, may be recalling Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7 as he did when he quoted uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 15. So I, as Isaiah 52 7 says this, how beautiful. On the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. But it is significant in, in our Ephesians pa passage in chapter 6 that Paul does not refer directly to the footwear here in Ephesians 6. Instead, he talks of the feet being fitted or shotted. So that, that's a foot covering. Anybody have a, if you have shoes on today, you have a foot covering, right? So he talks of the feet being fitted or shotted with a foot covering, showing again that he could be influenced by Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7 here. The idea of fitted that identifies the means by which to stand requires the people of the church to, to fasten on the footwear, to fasten the readiness of the gospel of peace. With this in mind, the sense would be that the gospel of peace, which God, through which believers have, have already been reconciled, as we talked about back in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17, it affords them a sure foothold in the spiritual battles of life that we find ourselves engaged in. So the preparation or the state of readiness that is required is none other than the gospel that promotes peace. So we are called to share the gospel, and part of that peace is that it brings peace and the peace that is coming. Who looks forward to eternal peace in heaven? Amen? So thank God, thank God, thank God, there's an end to the battle. There, there is an end to the battles of spiritual warfare in this life, and victory will be secured, and peace is going to have its place. Now, in this Ephesians message, Paul is calling believers to, to hold firm to the true nature of salvation despite the intensity and even the casualties of the battles that we just saw in a video a moment ago. So while this battle rages, the enemy is, is going to be promoting discord and factions, and he loves to do that in the body of Christ. So Christ followers need to be prepared to fully promote the peace that the gospel of Christ both secures and requires. Who's ready for a commercial break? Welcome back, Jenny Moritz. It's good to see you in the house today, right? I look back and just Jenny's just intently taking the... No. Good, so make sure you say hi to her if you haven't already. All right, commercial's over. Back to your regularly scheduled programming, all right? Well, why does the church, why do you and I as Christ followers need this piece of the armor to, uh, to, start, to stand firm? Because on, on the one hand... Uh, a, a solid assurance of, of our salvation and relationship with God enables us to remain strong in the midst of the severe test of life so we can be ready for anything. 
And on the other hand, the church is not to just merely hold on for, for dear life and, and remain in a defensive posture, hoping that it's just going to somehow survive and, and always be on, on defense. No, the armor, what are we having for? People, listen, people cannot be rescued and saved if the church is just always cowering in defense. Paradoxically, the church... The church battles by announcing peace to all that it encounters. All the while giving credibility to its peacemaking message and, and preserving the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace that we talked about back in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Once again, how many, how many, how many could use a little more peace in your life? Yeah. A little more peace with, in your life with the hope of, of an eternity of peace with our Lord? Well, put on the gospel. Put on the gospel. Prepare yourself with, with the gospel and, and put on this peace of Christ. In fact, Scripture in Colossians, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And then you share it with others. Well, I want to see how well you've been listening over the last four and a half years. We say, how do you do this? Pop quiz. Get into God's word. Get God's word into you. Okay, don't be crying about a lack of peace in your life if you're not going to the source. All right, it's, it's in there. You've heard me say a number of times, God's not hiding this stuff from us. He's, he's put it in there, right? Go after it. Get it. Get into God's word and get God's word into you. Here we go, verse 16. Take up the shield of faith. So, yeah, get those... Get, feet and wherever you go, wherever your feet take you, prepared with the gospel of peace. Now, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, if you read it, verse 16 actually starts with, in addition to all of this, or that could flesh out uh, perhaps to cover all of the rest. So, in addition to all of this, right, take up the shield of faith. So the Christian soldier, in addition to all of this, is to take up in addition to all of what? Well, we've already talked about the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the gospel of peace. The Christian soldier, in addition, is to take up the shield of faith. See, the implication here is that this is to be done through thick and thin, through easy, through difficult, through good, through bad. So when the circumstances of life take a rest, take up the shield of faith. When the battle is raging on like crazy, take up the shield of faith. See, this part of, of the pieces of the spiritual armor, uh, the, you know what this is? These are virtues. All right? These, the, these are virtues and these are attitudes to be practiced by the believers. The, by believers, that's the shield of faith. All right? Now, in the Old Testament, the shield was used as an image of God's protection for his people. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. My fortress and my refuge, my deliverer. My, oh, excuse me. Uh, after the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your very great reward. Psalm 18.2, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 28, verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. Now the metaphor that Paul is drawing from is the Roman soldier's gear of the day and, and the Roman shield used in Paul's day would, was about four feet in length or four feet tall, about two and a half feet wide. And it was described by Polybius, who was an early Greek historian, first, second century. It was described by Polybius as, as the first part of the armor as it was held out in front to protect the body. The shield was generally made of pieces of wood and, and covered by a, a leather hide. And uh, this is uh, not maybe the best replica. That one's a little small, but it's the best we can come up with, right? 
And so it was made of wood and covered by a leather hide, and it was bound together by, by iron. And, and soldiers would often fight side by side and, and, and form a, a, a wall of shields, if you will. But even a single-handed combatant found himself sufficiently protected with his shield. Once again, for history buffs, you may know this, it's recorded that after the battle of Dirachium, and that's in modern-day Albania, by the way, that a soldier named Sceva, now this is not to be confused with the guy in the Bible who had seven sons that kind of mishandled some spiritual things there, right? The seven sons of Sceva, that did not work out good for them. Uh, anyhow, Sceva was the name of the day, so it's recorded after the battle of Dirachium uh, that a soldier named Sceva counted no less than 220 darts and arrows stuck into his shield. It's a lot, isn't it? Something tells me it's a little heavier after the battle than before it, before it started. So for the Christian, this protective shield is faith. It's the shield of faith, isn't it? And only in this instance does Paul indicate the effect of a particular piece of armor. So with such a shield, come on, we just read it together, right? The believer can extinguish all of these fiery devices that are thrown at them by the devil. Oh my, it is amazing the powerful effect that faith can have on a Christ follower. Now, in a minute, we're going to show you another clip. But I just want you to know that this clip comes right on the tail end of... Well, they, um, their enemy was out for blood. They were threatened by an enemy that wanted to kill, okay? And they found themselves all bound up to this limb that's overhanging this huge gorge. It's this rock-solid wall with uh, water at the bottom, and sure enough, under the weight, it breaks off as they're bound to this thing, and they're falling down. <laughs> Okay, sound effects are free today. You know, bouncing off the jagged edges of this solid rock wall, and next thing you know, they splash into the water, and the current of the water is bashing them up against the rock wall, and, and then it calms down for just a moment. It's like spiritual warfare, right? You're getting all banged around all over the place. The enemy's out for blood. It calms down for a moment, but hold on. Let's take a look. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm getting all funned out. Uh-oh. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Booyah! <laughs> Many of you can testify how faith has encouraged you and put a bring it on fight in your spirit for the spiritual battles of life. Now be careful. Bring it on in pride, the devil's going to eat your lunch. Bring it on in faith and confidence in him and you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Shield of faith. Bring it on, right? The metaphorical picture comes from warfare in Paul's day of an arrow or a dart and how it would be dipped in a tar-like substance and then ignited before it was projected toward the enemy. Now, faith is mentioned all throughout Paul's letter to the Ephesians, but in this context, it's, it is the confident trust and receptiveness to Christ and His power that protects the whole person. You see, faith holds on to God's resources in the midst of the onslaught of, of evil, and it produces this firm resolve which douses anything that the enemy throws at the believer. You see, faith enable, enables the believer to do what we just read, to extinguish. To extinguish all of the burning arrows of the evil one. Now, the evil one, it's a title for Satan, isn't it? Our adversary, the devil. Jesus even referred to him as such in Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. Again, in John chapter 17, verse 15. And he's the one that's throwing all of these flaming arrows 
these projectiles toward you to try to destroy you in, in your walk with the Lord and in your life. Now, you can imagine with me probably. I mean, imagine having one of these things shot at you. So you can imagine how these arrows, even when not hitting the body but caught by the shield, might cause a little panic in a soldier. Right? We can imagine that. And the reason is is because they take a peek, and this thing's like on fire from, from top to bottom like we talked about earlier. A little panic. And, and the reason is that, that, that the shield was blazing fiercely, and so what that might do is cause the, cause the shoulder, or excuse me, the soldier to, to throw down his burning shield. He's a little nervous, a little panic. And, and because he's, he's feeling like it's making him feel vulnerable with all this fire on the other side of his arm, making him feel vulnerable to the swords and the spears of the enemy. But we need to be careful here at the hottest part of the battle because I want you to think about it. Yeah, that shield is up and it's taking on enemy fire and and there's all this fire maybe coming around over the top and under the bottom and from around each side. But if that faith is dropped... If that faith is removed, now it becomes damaging to to the whole individual, doesn't it? Now, we've already talked about peace. So the peace that the gospel of Jesus Christ can bring to you in your life now becomes susceptible and vulnerable to, to the arrows of the enemy that the shield of faith should be catching. Because you've dropped it. You're like, Lord, I've put my faith in you, and things aren't going exactly the way it seems to me they should be going, and my shield is on fire, and it's banged up, and some edges are dinged in. It's got some huge dents in it. I don't think this is working out, so we better drop this. Now the peace is susceptible. Not only is the peace susceptible, now all of those flaming projectiles from the enemy now has access to the breastplate of righteousness. And now the righteousness of Christ that you thought you were once so secure in, it's taking a pounding. And now you start to question whether or not that righteousness has any value like you did the shield of faith that you've dropped on the battleground. And not only are those arrows now getting into righteousness, that belt of truth that was firmly fastened around our our waist, our loins last week, now those arrows are beginning to attack and have a direct access to the truth that's formerly changed your life and set you free. So now these flaming arrows of the enemy is getting into areas that it should never be allowed to touch. And they take on firepower that your shield of faith should take on. So the next thing you do, you start doing with all those other pieces, the same thing you did with the shield of faith. Eh, let's, the gospel, no, let's let's get rid of that. Oh man, that that, that shield, that that breastplate of righteousness, that's pretty hot. We better take that off and discard that too. And and, oh man, the the truth, the truth of God just doesn't seem to be standing up and it it wasn't what all I thought it was, so let's get rid of that. And, and you just start stripping all of this stuff that's designed to protect you. And you're just left vulnerable with no protection from the armor of God. And I can tell you, you are not and I am not any match for the flaming arrows of the devil. That's why God has given us the armor. And no matter how hot the battle is, it needs to be in place doing its job. Some historical accounts record that before a battle, the soldiers would soak the leather covering of their shields in the water. That means that the shield uh, would not be set on fire at least as easily. So if the shield's not set on fire, the destructive power of the enemy gets neutralized now, doesn't it? It's neutralized. Here, the the burning arrows represent every type of assault that's devised by the evil one. See, it's not just temptations to impure things. It's uh, maybe, uh, it it, it tingles your ears, but it's a false doctrine. The flaming air of the devil. A lot of the things online maybe may fit under the temptations to impure conduct. 
What's another flaming arrow? We could spend an hour on this. How about doubt? Yeah, I don't know about God's word. It's exactly what he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. If he can just get you to doubt God's word, it's going to lead to a world of trouble in your life. Uh, anxiety, depression, despair, hopelessness. Man, they just keep coming. Physical infirmities, right? Uh, this agenda of the culture, this lie of the culture, this, that, and the third. Listen, the Christian's shield of faith soaked in prayer. The Christian shield of faith soaked in prayer effectively neutralizes the danger of such missiles, not merely by deflecting them, but actually by quenching the flames. Quenching the flames but the, the, that prevent that flame from spreading. The shield of faith is designed to quench and, and to keep the arrows of the dark from spreading to righteousness, to peace, to truth. Amen? Faith is the power that enables the believer to resist the devil and triumph over his attack. Brian, I'm going to invite you to come on back up today. Do you remember from the, the Easter message just a couple of weeks ago when we talked about how pa or Peter uh, bailed on Jesus at the most intense moment? He fled, right? When the, when, when the flaming arrows of accusation started coming his way and and they were coming in hot and heavy what did he do he bailed on jesus by denying the lord three times by the way just like jesus or precisely like jesus told him he would do he dropped his shield because the lord's will the lord's will didn't fit his perception of what god's will should look like in that moment right looks like Jesus is all of a sudden not in control. He's always been in control, but now things are different. Things are different. He dropped his shield. You know why Peter did what he did? Because he forgot the words. He forgot the promises of Jesus, and he misread the moment. He forgot, and he misread the moment, and everything that happened happened precisely as Jesus said it would. We are living in times now that are precisely as Jesus said they would be. We cannot afford to forget the words and the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the absolute worst thing that you and I can do in this moment in time that so many in the early video have done, they've misread the moment. It looks like the enemy's win winning. No, he's not. He's only winning to those who are not getting into the Word of God and getting the Word of God into them. He's only winning for those that fail to suit up with the armor of God and be filled with the power of His Spirit. Those are the only ones he's advancing against. We're living in times precisely now as Jesus said they would be. People are darkened in their understanding today. And just like he said, there's this reversal of understanding of what is good and what is evil. Many of you know exactly what I was talking about. So forever almost, or the history of the planet, there was at least a basic understanding of what was good and what was evil, but we are in the day, just like Jesus said, that what was formerly considered evil will now be considered good. What was formerly considered good will now be considered evil by people. It's happening. It's now. See, these things that we've been talking about, they're no longer coming. They're here. They're here, and that's why so many are falling away. That's why Christians are walking away from the Lord. They're walking away from the church. Pastors are leaving the ministry. And churches are closing down. Because it's here. It's real time. You've heard me say, we're going to lose the days of comfort. But God has some great promises coming when it's time to release them. 
had to get through a crucifixion before he could release his resurrection power. We cannot afford to miss the moment. Hear me today, beloved. Now is not the time to bail. Now's the time to get in. Now is not the time for bail. It's time for shields up. Come on, give me the shields up symbol. It's time for shields up. It's time for our feet fitted with the gospel of peace. It's time for the breastplate of righteousness in place. It's time for the belt of the truth of God securely fastened around us. It's time for standing. And standing until this time is past and the promises of God are fulfilled. I can tell you this, you'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. You remember what happened with Peter when Jesus locked eyes with him? Because remember, Jesus said, Pete, before the night's over, you're going to deny me three times. Oh no, God, I'll die with you. Right? And then the trial started. You were with him. No, it wasn't. You were with him. No, it wasn't. You were with him. I don't even know the guy. cock a doodle do. And Jesus locked eyes with Peter, and Peter, it just hit him. It just hit him. And what's it say? He ran out and wept bitterly. Now, all those words of the Lord came flooding back in, right? He dropped his shield. He forgot the promises. He he misread the moment. And and now, now he's filled with regret. I didn't stand at the most crucial time when I should have been standing. When I should have made good on my words, Lord, I will die with you. Come on, we've all made promises to the Lord. And when things get a little hot and heavy and difficult, there we go. Shields down. And now the effects of the arrows of the enemy have done their damage and we're just left vulnerable before the Lord. But listen, if you don't do that, you will be glad you didn't give in. Now here's the thing. Peter had time to rectify his mistake. We may not have that. None of us are promised tomorrow he had time to make it right. You've heard me give personal illustrations from family members that have tragically died as young as teenagers. This past week, a report of a young girl lost her life from a lifelong physical battle. Things that we don't put in our day schedules, right? Who remembers daytimers? Or now our electronic calendars. We don't know. We don't know what tomorrow has. Peter had time to rectify his mistake. You may not have that. Get it right now. Get it right now. So here's something I want to do today. Over the next couple of moments, I'm, I'm going to ask you to stand if, if you need to. I can tell you this, you're in a safe place here. If you can't stand here, you're not going to be able to stand out there where you don't have the protection of the church around you of the flaming arrows of the enemy if you can't stand here you're not going to be able to stand outside of this place you facing a tough situation today we just read about it as we talked about over the last few weeks the schemes of the devil that are designed to to destroy you? Are you facing a scheme of the enemy in your life now? Could be of any kind. Are you facing some kind of a spiritual attack? And man, those arrows are doing that. They hurt. A broken relationship, a hurt, hurtful situation, giving in to a temptation over and over and over dealing with this difficulty, that difficulty, and you're vulnerable because you're, you're not suited up. You're not suited up with this armor that God has provided for you and for me, and you realize 
Listen, you know the battle is fierce. You're taking a pounding. We're all taking a pounding today from the attacks of the enemy. We made it very clear last week, nobody gets an exemption. You don't get one. I don't get one. My family does not get an exemption, and neither does yours. So you're either in that attack or you know it's coming. It's time to suit up. You're taking a pounding and you know that you know that you know you're trying to do things on your own or the philosophies of this world. You need God's truth securely fitted around the core of your being. Your mind. Things that affects the rest of you. You just react, or maybe you're just reacting to all this stuff in life, in the flesh, your own way, the way mom and dad taught you, or just whatever feels good at the moment, but his righteousness is not in place. And you realize today, you got to get this in place. Because those arrows are getting in and, and affecting the vital organs of who you are. Many of you said earlier, I could use some more peace in my life. He's given us the gospel. And you're like, you know, I go here in life, I go there in life, in my family, work, neighborhood, this situation, that situation, but there's a depletion of peace in my life, and I need to get my, I need the gospel of peace fitted. Maybe you're here today, your faith's a little weak, but you understand it's time for shields up. It's time for shields up. I got to put my faith in Jesus Christ. If he says it in his word, I'm going to stand on it because heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will endure forever no matter what it seems like in the moment. Maybe you're here today, you're misreading a key moment in your life, and that's why you're taking a pounding and you've laid down that faith, but today it's time to pick it up. And you may be like the guy, the soldier I told you earlier, you may, you may, you may have 220 flaming arrows and darts in it but you're going to keep it up strong. Come on. Has the word of God spoken to you as you're needing your life today? If you can't stand here, you're not going to make it into the world. Let's start standing all over this place. I need to suit up like never before. I realize this with God's armor. Come on. Right now, we're suiting up. We're going to cry out to God all over this place. The, the altars are always open, but you need to get some of the armor in place so that those fiery darts of the evil, of the evil one can be quenched and you can stand as a soldier of God in the strength of God in the face of the fiercest battle. Come on, let's turn this whole place into, a, into the house of prayer that Jesus said that his Father's house is. And let's begin to cry out for, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we are living in days and times just like you said would happen at the end of time. The days are evil. People are falling away. Churches are closing. Good and evil are being confused and reversed. But you have provided an armor. It is the armor of the living God. You have provided everything we need to suit up and stand strong. And not only stand strong, but advance in the face of of the enemy in this day the church does not have to cower but can be strong and grow and advance against the kingdom of darkness come on don't listen to me pray it's a house of prayer corporate prayer tell the Lord what you're willing to surrender to him right now let the Lord either speak to you or speak to or you speak to him God I'm suiting up today I'm suiting up today. I'm suiting up today. I'm suiting up today. I'm suiting up today with the belt of your truth. I'm putting on your righteousness, God. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm doing. Fitting my feet with the gospel of peace. Yes, shields up today. Come on, if you want to come and pray or stand where you are, Brian, lead us in something. Let's cry out to God in the house of the Lord today. Let's suit up and walk out of here with the spirit of confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ being able to say, bring it on. Suited and standing, bring it on. Come I on. will look to you 
in my trouble you will find me shield me in your truth you're the God who fights beside me show me you are here tell me once again who I am every doubt and fear must bow down when you're surrounding all darkness all bondage all sorrow falls underneath my feet we sing out hallelujah King Jesus Sing it together. As you're clothing me with power, I feel my faith arise, and my enemies are scattered. All darkness, all enemy has to leave, all other power slain, here in your presence we will scream out victory, we declare the name, the name of Jesus, boldly we proclaim, the enemy has to leave, all other power slain. Here in your presence, and we will scream out victory. Yeah. All darkness, all bondage, all sorrow falls underneath my feet. We sing out.
declare the name, the name of Jesus. Boldly we proclaim, the enemy has to leave, all other power slain. Here in your presence, we will scream our victory. Oh, declaring. We declare the name, the name of Jesus. Boldly we proclaim, the enemy has to leave, all of her power slain. Here in your presence, we will scream. One more time, yes, we declare the name, the name of Jesus. Boldly we proclaim, the enemy has to leave, all of the power slain. Here in your presence, we will scream our victory. All darkness, all bondage, all sorrow falls underneath my feet. We sing out, hallelujah, King Jesus, you want it all. Welcome to stay and pray as long as you like. Angie just came up and shared a verse. What's that verse again? First John. Ah, it's all right. It, go home and read First John. It's in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Amen. So that verse says, we are overcomers by faith. We have victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to stay and pray as you, long as you want. You can do another song here in a moment, Brian. Hey, make sure you say happy, to ber happy birthday to Bill. Meet Sam and Sarah. They'd love to say hi to you. Stay and pray as long as you want. God be with you. See you Wednesday and or Sunday. Go in the victory of Jesus Christ. never visited us at Five Rivers, we want to invite you to this week's services with ministry for the entire family. For location information, visit us online at fiveriverschurch.com.